Hey, it's Scotty here. I haven't done any live videos last week with all the Christmas and everything, and I'm just gonna do one this week, and then I'll resume January 6th uh, doing all the daily live videos. But um, yeah, thanks for checking me out, and, and there's lots of people who watched the videos and commented, which I appreciate. It makes me feel like I'm making a difference. So today's live video, um, and of course I'm a trainer, and I'm in the gym industry, so we're big fans of New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff. So of course I'm gonna chat about that a little bit, but this is a special new year. Um, for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's 2020. It's a new decade. And like I started writing for the newspaper for the Red Deer Express and Civil Lake News 10 years ago, which is kind of cool um, for me. Uh, but it, it's also just Wednesday. You know, like it's, it, it's, it's nothing or it's something. You get to choose. I like to think it's a big deal. I like to think that the close of one year and the start of a new year it's like it's a chance to to be fresh and to start over and to design your life rather than just getting through it because it's your life and you are the architect of your life you get to design your life and i know things happen that are external and there are things in play that that just do their thing i get that um i have my own things that i can't change even if i wanted to and that's fine but you still, within those lines, get to design your life. Like every great thing in the world, everything started as an idea. The Eiffel Tower, uh, the automobile, running shoes. People didn't used to have running shoes the way we know them with the different layers of rubber and the foam and the cushion and the arch support. That didn't exist. Like that was somebody's idea. He was actually a running coach. Anyway, um, he's coach Steve Prefontaine, I believe, and he was making those shoes with his wife's waffle iron. He was pouring rubber into her waffle iron, or ruining her waffle irons and making shoes. Anyway, um, but everything started as an idea. Reading glasses, pizza, um, light bulb, like everything was an idea and it was a goal. And it's just like right now, coming up on New Year's Eve where somebody's like, oh, this year I want to whatever. and. You just, like, don't underestimate the power of setting goals and what you can achieve when you do that. And maybe you don't have some world-ending, world-changing, life-changing, whole pain-ending idea. Maybe you've got just a little idea, but that's fine. Because um, you can do this at any point of the year, but January 1st is a really great opportunity to mark time and set some powerful goals. Now. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. And one of my favorites is to start with the attitude of gratitude because that's very, very, very powerful. You can't be miserable when you're grateful. You can't do both of those. So the best place to start, in my opinion, is to look back at 2019 and go, well, what happened in that year, that chunk of time? What was great? What was amazing? What was unforgettable? What was incredible? What were the best things that happened in 2019? Who did you meet? Who did you spend time with? Who did you reconnect with? What movie did you see? What book did you read that really was neat and it shook your foundations in a good way? That you were like, wow, that really changed my outlook. Was there a place you visited, a vacation you had that was spectacular? What did 2019 give that was so incredible? And like I know personally, 2019 also had some real significant challenges. Um, and so it's important to look at those too because we can learn from them. So what were the challenges in 2019? Like, you know, what was your biggest regret? What was the thing that really didn't work? What was something that you were super stressed about for a period of time and then it turned out to be no big deal? Or you weren't stressed enough and it did turn out to be a big deal? Or, or, or anything? Like what happened in 2019 that you could learn from. That's the key to that. And how did you grow in 2019? How did you challenge yourself? What did you do better? Were there, were there births? Were there deaths? Um, were there children reaching specific milestones and attaining certain things? Like, I know I have a son and it's amazing. Every year he does all this incredible stuff and grows and becomes more of a person. So looking back at those things, um, you know, were there arguments that you resolved? Were there apologies that you said that changed things? Were somebody you reconnected with? Um, take pause to just learn from those things from 2019 because that's really all we can do is learn, right? Um, 
If, like, what if you could take a time machine and go back to January 1st, 2019 and, and do everything? What, well, would you change anything? Knowing now what you know, what would be different? You can learn from that, right? Okay, all right, got it. I, I would have done this differently. I, I've got another chance. 2020, it's a fresh chance. And sometimes the easiest way to do this is to take your photos on your phone and, and dial back to January 1st and just swipe through your whole year's worth of photos and realize all that happened in 2019. This powerful stuff has happened. It's really cool. Now, once you've done that and you've reflected on 2019, you've had your review of 2019, now it's time to start designing 2020. What do you want 2020 to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to create? Because it's a blank slate right now. It's an open palette. You can literally change your whole world with a decision. Like I still remember in the mid 90s, late 90s, when I got fit and I was in architecture and I decided I wanted to be a personal trainer and I wanted to open a gym someday, that was just a decision. Now it happened to be in September, it doesn't matter. It was just a decision. And it took a while, but that's now over 20 years ago. It's 23 years ago this year. And the decision to open a gym, okay, it took a lot of work and there was all the stress involved and we had to, all the things we had to do to create that, but we've been open almost 18 years now simply because I had a goal. That's it. It's that decision to make a goal. And you're going to hear trainers say this all the time, but your goal has to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time sensitive, smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time sensitive. You have to have those pieces in place with your goal. Because if your goal is like in 2020, I will get fit. Well, that's, what is that? Like go do two burpees. Okay, great. You're more fit. I don't think that's what you meant. They have to be specific. By March 1st, 2020, I will have dropped 20 pounds of fat. I will be able to do 20 burpees in a row. Uh, I'll be able to run a 5K. I'll be able to bench press, deadlift, squat. I don't care. What, curl, skate for 20 minutes without taking a break. It doesn't matter. Whatever your goal is, is your goal. But it needs to be specific, measurable, and time sensitive. March 1st. You need to have a deadline. Um, because if you don't, if it's too vague, it, it just won't happen. It's too wishy-washy. You, you've got to be specific. You've got to know what you want. It's kind of like this. You've got to have a goal. Think about hockey. There are some hockey players, and I always say, who's the best? I always think, you know, Wayne Gretzky and Yari Curry and all those guys back in the, in the day when I watched hockey. But, you know, some of the new guys like Connor McDavid or whatever, like these guys can be anywhere on the ice and they can shoot the puck and hit the net from anywhere. If it just give them an empty rink and say, okay, go stand in that corner and I want you to shoot the puck into the net. Whoosh, boom. Okay, over here, in the net. Whoosh, closer, further, offside, one side. They're going to hit the net from everywhere, like 99% of the time. Awesome. Okay, what if there was no goal? What if during an NHL game, there was no goals? There's just a bunch of guys skating around, shooting the puck and trying to avoid each other. <laughs> that would be really boring and stupid. It would have no point. We have no point at all. If hockey didn't have two nets and goalies, there would be no point. This is the same. You need to have a goal. You need a hockey net. You need something to shoot the puck at. That's your life. That's why New Year's resolutions matter. Because you need a net. And the thing is, it's really powerful to set goals and intentions and plans on a cellular level. I'm reading this really cool book right now that talks about how DNA and proteins work together to create our body and all of its realities and how that's energy and how our focus and our energy affects us on a cellular DNA level. It's really powerful stuff. This is the same. When you decide on a goal, full stop, I'm doing this, stuff will come into play and opportunities will exist that wouldn't have otherwise. And that's the power of it. When you've got a hockey net, when you've created a goal, you're gonna be skating along and the puck's gonna come right in front of you. Now, the next thing with goals is you have to take action. You can't just set a bunch of goals and sit on the couch and do nothing and expect the world to hand you a favor. That's not how it works. You need to, take, you need to set goals and then you need to take action. But the thing is, once you set those powerful goals, with your timelines and they're specific, 
things will start to happen. You will be aware of things that you wouldn't have paid attention to before. All of a sudden you look down and the puck is right there and you just smack it in the net and you get a goal. That's the same thing with setting goals. Things will come to pass because you set those goals. That's the power of it. And I know some people are like, well, I hate New Year's resolutions. Yeah, my resolution this year is to not make any resolutions. Right. That's awesome. Go ahead. Um, but I don't recommend you do because goals work. I'm standing in one of my goals. My goal was to own a gym. I own a gym. After I was in my big crash and I almost died and I broke everything, my only goal was to get back to the world championships. And I did that last year, a year ago. I went back to the world championships. And I, I overcame obstacles that I shouldn't have been able to overcome. My knee was trashed. My shoulder was destroyed. I shouldn't have been able to compete in the world championships, but I did because it was my goal and I never wavered from it. And that's not that I'm special. I'm not. I'm regular. I'm normal. I'm average. But you've got to have a goal. You've got to have something you focus on. Design your life. It's the only one you get. All right. I've gone a little long today, but it's my New Year's thing. I love to support people and see you succeed. I want you to have a vibrant, amazing life. I see so many people that are getting on in years, in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s, and they're just a whisper, and they're just fading. And your life doesn't have to do that. You can be strong into your old age. I watched a video of a guy in his 90s who can deadlift 400 pounds, and he's strong and fit and healthy. I encourage you to do that. Eat well. Take care of yourself. Hey, New Year's Eve, don't drink and drive. Call a cab. Get a friend. Leave the keys at home. Take care of yourself. I want to see you beginning of January, getting fit, having fun. All right, that's my soapbox for today. Hope you have a great day. Happy New Year. I hope you've had an amazing Christmas, and I look forward to chatting with you as we get into the videos again, January 6th.